sorry for cutting that previous video short. Um, basically, we're proving that if a is plus or minus 1, then a divides 1. So if a is plus or minus 1, that means that a times a would be a squared, which is equal to 1. So we found an integer such that if we take a and multiply it by this integer, we get 1. Therefore, a divides 1. So that was a two-directional proof, and we're done. Now let's take a look at number 3. If a divides b and c divides d, then if we multiply a times c, that product will divide bd. All right, so we're given these two facts, and we're going to prove this. So a divides b and c divides d implies that a, I'll use the letters maybe um, n and m on this one, a n equals b and a m, sorry, and c m equals d for some integers n and m. That's just the definition of what it means for a to divide b. It means a times an integer equals b, and c times an integer equals d. And the integers we used were n and m. <clears throat> okay, so that means that if we multiply, I want to get a, c together now. That means that a, c, um, if I multiply a, and C together, I get, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply A, N, C, M. Multiply this times this, I'm going to get B times D. So A, N, C, M is equal to B, D. And I'm going to regroup a little bit. Let's put A, C together. And let's put n m together, and that's equal to b d. <clears throat> and that implies that a c divides b d, which is exactly what we needed to show. Because a c times this integer, um, obviously if n and m are both integers, then n times m is also an integer. <clears throat> so pretty simple proof. Uh, number four, this is kind of like a transitive property. If A divides B and B divides C, then A divides C. Or if A goes into B and B goes into C, then A goes into C. All right, so let's write down that A divides B and B divides C. That tells us, by the definition of divides, that tells us that a m is equal to b and b n is equal to c for some m and n in the set of integers. Okay, so what does that tell us? That tells us that if I take b times n, I'm going to substitute, though. That tells me that is b, right, times n is equal to c. So all I did for that, that step was basically substitute. bn is equal to am times n. And I could rewrite that as a times mn is equal to C. And that's exactly what it means for A to divide C. <clears throat> so A divides C, because A times this integer, whatever MN is, whatever that integer is, A times MN gives you C. So A divides C. 
Okay, so I've got a couple of more to do. Number five says that if A divides B and B divides A, if we have that situation, we only have that situation when A is equal to either plus or minus B. This is an if and only if, so it's going to be a two-directional two proof. Um, actually, I think I can do it without two directions. I think I can continue to use if and only if on every step. So A divides B and B divides A. If and only if A in, uh, let's see, yeah, I'll use A M is equal to B and B N is equal to A for some M and N in the set of integers. Okay, so what we've done so far is just use the definition, that's all. <clears throat> all right, well that's, if that's true, we can use some kind of a substitution here where from this bn equals a, I'm going to say am times n equals a. Okay, so all we've done here is a substitution, just like we did in a, in a uh, previous one. All right, so if am times n is equal to a, that's only going to happen if, what? Let's see, if I rephrase this as a times mn equals a, that means that mn is equal to one. And what does that mean? That means that m and n are both equal to plus or minus one. Either they're both positive one or, or they're both negative one. And since we've got m and n up here, we can see if m, m is either a positive one or a negative one, which means then that a is either, uh, b is either equal to a plus or minus a, and a is either equal to, uh, a is either equal to b or minus b. So from that, we can conclude, I'll move to the right here, that A is equal to plus or minus B. And that finishes that one. And the last one of these six facts <clears throat> says that if A, is, if A divides B and it also divides C, so A divides B, A divides C, then A divides BX plus CY, for all x and y in the set of integers. So another way of saying this would be if a divides b and a divides c, then a divides any integer, multi, uh, in, <laughs> integer linear combination of b and c. Okay, so let's, we're given this, so a divides b and a divide C gives us A M equals B and A N equals C for some M N in the set of integers. All right, so for any X and Y in the set of integers, we see that b x plus c y is equal to, well, let's see, b is a m, so it'd be a m x, c is a n, so it would be a n y. All right, and notice they both have an A, so I can factor the A out. Plus in Y. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. That implies that A 
divides bx plus cy. Because a times this integer is equal to bx plus cy. So by the definition, a divides bx plus cy. And we could do a real, I've got a little bit of room down here. We could do a real simple example. If I said 3 divides 6, and maybe 3 divides 15, like that. Well, that implies that 3 divides 6x plus 15y, according to this. And let's show that that's true. And we could just say that's true since 6x plus 15y is equal to, and I'm just going to factor the 3 out of it, 2x plus 5y. So clearly, if 3x divides 6 and 3, uh, sorry, if 3 divides 6 and 3 divides 15, then 3 will divide any linear combination of 6 and 15.